Welcome to Brightly Radiant Being, the show that wildly recognizes, encourages, and invests in the radiance we all carry so you can shine your brightest. Each episode, we share soul-driven advice and topics to help you live more brightly in mind, body, and spirit. Through sharing our experiences, friendship, and passions, we hope to impact you to step more brightly into yourself, inch by inch. Hello, Tracy. <laughs> Hi, Amy. <laughs> I am feeling the season. Are you feeling the season? I am straight on feeling the season. And if you are listening to this on a podcast, you will not see how we're feeling the season. But Ooh, if we're you, feeling it. I'm oh yeah. If you head over to YouTube, you can actually see how we're feeling the season. <laughs> <laughs> so we are recording this um about a week before Halloween or Samhain um and it'll post on November 1st so during All Saints and we were feeling a little well I was feeling a little Stevie Nicks <laughs> I don't know about you what's your look inspired by what are you feeling I'm I'm feeling a little a little cottagey a little um fairy a little eclectic so a little I'm bit of magic a little <laughs> bit of magic absolutely so I love that you use the word cottagey I bought a home um that was built in 1929 and it's stucco and it's it's just a box right like it, it's had some improvements throughout its 90 plus years of life but when I was driving through the neighborhood and trying to explain to everybody what I loved about my house and what I loved about the neighborhood, I just kept saying, Ooh, I love that house. It's so witchy. Ooh, I love this house. It's so <laughs> witchy. And the person I was with took grave offense to that. Didn't, you know, she's very polite with it, but she just kept correcting me. And she's like, cottagey. Yes, that is a very cottagey home. And you know what? It was both. It's totally both. <laughs> <laughs> so when you said witchy, was it because it was cottagey? And that's what you took as witchy, a witchy house? Both. <laughs> both <laughs> and, which I would say our outfits are also both and. and I yeah. was feeling a little witchy, like it's Scorpio season, it's fall, it's yeah. dark, it's just I don't know. We talked the last episode and the episode 44 on Sal Wen, just kind of about like the thinning of the veils. And I, I don't know, you know, people talk about like the change in air and the Christmas and, and they uh, generally, you know, attribute it to the weather. But I also feel like there's just kind of, there's that thinning of the veils and a little bit more of the magic is coming through or we're maybe feeling a little bit more intuitive, but I mean, I don't know, like, obviously we we plan out the arc of our conversation for our show or we try to but we're also finding that there's like the synchronicity that oh, was yes. unintended that when it finally does air there's like something going on in the world right oh for heaven's sakes so i'm writing the show notes and have been for um a couple weeks and today when i went in um, no, not today. I had already written the show notes or a lot of the show notes. And at one point I worded the section of the notes with certain wording in my email today, I get an email from another podcast who I really love them. And I love the podcast and their episode for today is the witch archetype. And I'm like, that's exactly what I wrote for one of our sections. Right? Like our episode, uh, you know, it, it, it's about being a witch. It's about feeling witchy, about being a baby witch. It's about the more mystical, magical aspects of all of the things that we talk about. So mm -hmm. we are typically a personal development podcast, right? Like that's our mm -hmm. general aim is to help people be the brightest versions of themselves. Mm -hmm. But I think there's kind of like, 
this power within each of us that we don't name and we don't attribute it to things or we bury it down as magical thinking or immature, naive thinking, um, happenstance, things like that. When really it's kind of our own personal power in, in a different way, in a different light. Um, so I was wondering, you know, I mentioned how, um, my friend felt about the word witchy. (laughs) She clearly had some negative connotations. Mm -hmm. Do you have feelings about the word witchy, witch? So for me, I actually love the word witch. However, what happens, the baggage that I have attached to it is actually other people's baggage that apparently I have accepted and said, here, let me carry that for you. I'll take oh, it to your room, <laughs> right? That's how I'm feeling. So I feel as if I don't have the baggage, but I carry other people's baggage around the word. So I'm trying to... Um, you know, set the bags down and, and move on with my life. And I, it, it's been very weird. I step into it. I step out of it. I step into it. I step out of it. You know, I, I, I do the hokey pokey and I turn myself around. That's what it feels like. Like, so I'm just, what, what does it feel like when you step into it? Like what calls you to step into it or what are the feelings you get? What is it that you're stepping into? Well, and let me just back up a second because now I have, I feel as if I'm now in it and not stepping back out. I'm in it. But in the beginning, what it would feel like, and to be perfectly honest, it started when I was probably 11 years old. Um, and, you know, the traditional things like all 11 year old girls are like witches. You're as light as a feather. You're as stiff as a board. Making a mud pie with acorns outside. And Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. Communing with the fairies. Like, yeah, you're all in. But there was a certain point where I actually thought, oh, sure, I could do that. And then you're like, what are you talking about? That's not even real. So then you step out. But Every time I would step in, I think what it was, I feel as if what happened in the past was I stepped in because something was horribly wrong with my life at whatever stage I was in, right? Oh, and was it I like thought, a break? right. Well, I feel like it was more like, oh, what if I just tried this? What if I tried being a witch and doing magic spells and maybe that would work? Well, so you like witch, witch. I was just, that was going to be my next question. What does being a witch mean to you? Yeah, I was like, witch, witch. But what I would say also in hindsight is that is not the way to step into it with stress and like, this has to work and, and not doing the actual work or shadow work that needs to be done. So in other words, like I will give one example. When I was just ridiculously in debt, um, two credit cards, just making barely the minimum payment, I made myself this (laughs) Juno box and put like mirrors in it and did a spell and put the bills in it, but didn't change anything else I was doing. So just so you know, kids, that's, that does not work. That's not how it actually works. I mean, you've given so many, I'm going to, I don't know if I'm using this word right, but allegories for life. Like earlier, I I, I was carrying other people's (laughs) bags and they're not mine. And I just need to set them down, but sometimes they can come back up. And then now like I was asking the universe for all this support, but not changing any behaviors or patterns of my own. Right. So like what a, yeah, kids, it doesn't work. Like you, you have to be making space for the magic to occur in your life, right? Like the universe is supporting you, but you still you can't be work. panicked. You <laughs> panic magic doesn't work. <laughs> it can't be Thursday. It can't be a Thursday. You can't be wondering what you're doing with your life. Right. Yes. <laughs> right. And so I would say that what finally happened for me is I was at a place where things felt 
okay around me, right? I had made changes. I was doing the right things. You know, I was doing some other right things. And I had started really being interested in shadow work. And so I'd started meditating and journaling and asking myself hard questions. And so I feel like the shadow work came first. Then it was almost like one of those things where looking around and go, oh yeah, I have that tarot deck. I should look at that. <laughs> and I and have then, all these tools and resources and I'm just waiting for them to do things for me without yes, my involvement. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like it was like the shadow work came first and then it was just like, do, do, do. Oh yeah. Tarot. And I, I found this meme and I'm just going to read it. Okay. It starts with a bundle of sage. Next thing you know, 50 crystals, 12 candles, five tarot decks, a few skulls, a bunch of oils, and boom, now you're a witch. And that's sort of what it felt like. It was like, do, 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 tarot. Oh, I want to learn more about tarot and started taking classes and books and then really paying attention. And I feel like after we started this show, I really started to pay attention to cycles and the moon yeah. and ritual and things like that, where I, my attention was put on intention. And yet I still wasn't completely like, I'm a witch, everyone. How do you do? I'm Amy. I'm a witch, right? I'm not, I wasn't going to do that. I mean, did you walk around before that and be like, hi, I'm Amy. I work for local government in this book supporting industry. Like, no, you didn't, right? Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> which is also why, yes, I feel like there are, there's room for sort of a declaring without declaring, like, tell me you're a witch without telling me you're a witch. Well, I've got sage and 50 crystals, 12 candles, five tarot decks. <laughs> a bunch I gotta of say, oils. Amy. <laughs> I don't think when we first met five years ago that you were out as a witch. <laughs> I don't think you were in a state where you were like, this is what I'm doing and I'm whether panicked or not. Um, I, everything in your office, may, I, I knew I was like, we're going to connect and we're going to be friends. <laughs> like there were all these subtle hints all over that not that I was like actively being like looking you know like witch radar or anything like that but like you had all these subtle things with your um not your incense but your what is it the essential oil the essential the oils yeah the art that you chose for your walls mm -hmm. the types of books you were reading all that type of stuff <laughs> that it was like you were exuding it to the universe before you were ready to acknowledge it yourself yeah. And one thing I've, so I've noticed, um, part of why I wanted to do this episode, I keep calling people baby witches, not that I'm some grandmaster or crone or wicked witch or anything mm -hmm. like that, but there has been an influx, at least in my social media feeds of people that do tarot, people who do spells, oh, people yes. <laughs> who do all these different sorts of things and classify themselves as magic or witches and whatnot. And it's, part of me got really frustrated and upset with it. <laughs> and so part of the baby, which was maybe a little derogatory and judgmental <laughs> and gatekeeping. Um, but then I've come to, to lovingly, like it's an endearing term just to describe somebody who's figuring it out. So kind of like you, that maybe started as a kid and has been turning it on and off and carrying different baggage and figuring it out. But I've noticed in the past year or two, an influx in books. So in the early 2000s, I kind of feel like there's this little resurgence, you know, it's when locally in um, Minnesota, it's when I have Horace and a couple other stores opened yeah. mm -hmm. and then it kind of died down again. Right. So like there's, there's been people who have been popular in, in the field, authors and speakers and things like that. But in the past two years, it's blown up. Every book publisher has a set of books coming out. Everybody has a podcast on our podcast episodes, TikTok, Instagram, all that's crazy with it. And I don't just think it's my personal 
algorithm. Like, no, I, I you're, you all. are absolutely right. There, and, there are articles written on this yeah. surge. So it. I recently saw a TikTok from somebody in publishing saying, hey, I'm noticing this too. That means given what we, everything we had with the pandemic and everything this year and paper shortages and all this stuff, that the books that we're seeing at market right now were written three years ago, maybe mm -hmm. five. Um, and so when she's kind of going through her whole timeline, she's like, do you know what happened a few years ago around that time when all, suddenly all these women started getting interested in this? The Women's March. Yes. Yes. And so I feel like, you know, we're sometimes people hear the word witchy and they think Satanism and black magic and, and negative spells and things like that. But when I hear it, based on my knowledge of like the Salem witch trials and history and other things like that, when I hear witch, I just think somebody that had personal power that somebody else tried to take away. And they used it by using a derogatory name. And then mm -hmm. just the social consciousness at the time kind of took it from there and, mm -hmm. and punished them or scared people into being quiet. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I mean, when you I feel think like back, historically, the people who were labeled witch, they were actually a healer, um, uh, maybe living a little bit on the outskirts of the village, right? So they weren't... Um, it, they were very much connected to nature, but they weren't really in the village with everybody else. So they were kind of considered powerful and also untamed. So here's, you know, you've got this typically a woman um, who's what a healer, a woman know? loves nature, lives outside the restrictions of society, a powerful, independent woman. And they're like, witch, evil, get rid of her. So it was like, you know, it was threatening to many people. It was very threatening that here was an independent uh, woman. The other thing, too, that happened is people would um, condemn someone, uh, say that they were a witch if they were elderly and maybe it was no one wanted to take oh, care of them anymore mentally talk about what a great way to get rid of your competition yeah well you didn't like yeah I mean we've been doing it all throughout history it didn't stop with witches you know it happened during the cold war McCarthyism all sorts of things but like definitely oh, like such the, a good point yeah the Salem witch trial period I mean if you ever have a chance to go to Boston they have a couple exhibits there that I, I felt were really worth going to and listening mm -hmm. to the history and all the different things that they did I mean Monty Python even has a fabulous joke about it with you know like does the wood float and all that kind of type of oh, stuff and, yeah um but so I want to go back though because you have yeah spoken a lot throughout the show about the transition you're experiencing and accepting mm -hmm. your proneness just from an age perspective, right? And mm -hmm. from a wisdom and experience. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, you know, as you're going more into like this witchy, you know, period and accepting it again and putting down other people's bags, to, you know, leaving it at TSA and be like, nope, not it. Um, do you feel like you're stepping into a personal power or that you're claiming the power or declaring the power that you have? And if so, how are you doing? Yeah, I do feel as if I am doing that and how I'm doing it Hmm, that's a really good question. And maybe that's my next step is thinking about the how, because folks, this is like, yes, it's been, I've been in transition for a while, but it's also still kind of new to me, to the fact, to the declaring part and the realization said, that I do have power. Yeah, you said you were stepping into it, though. I yes. So I how am. does one step into it? So you mentioned tarot. Yes. So I cycles. So yes. Thank you for that. So I am stepping into it by honoring the the intention, by honoring the cycles, by honoring the moon. I think I'm listening to my intuition. I'm having space for mm -hmm. meditation for um, journaling, for uh, ritual, um, uh, for nature. So I am intentionally doing things. Literally, 
I sprinkle cinnamon in my coffee and that is with intention. We've talked before about how I clean the house with, with you know, blessing. music and essential oils and blessing. And now, I mean, every day I talk to my plants and I touch my plants and I tell them how beautiful they are. And so I think, I think you just nailed it for me. Like how to define witchy witchiness, witch to somebody who like needs to come back from the derogatory slanderous name it's been called and it's around intention, right? So I, I feel like how you described it is When I am feeling witchy, I am putting my intentions out into the world and I'm believing they're being held by more than me. Right. And, and yeah, right. Like it's a sort of prayer, these rituals and these intentions and, and they're just habits and ways of staying connected. And you have listed so many different ways and not all of these ways are going to resonate with everybody, but what I've liked about the influx of, um, you know, newer information around being a baby witch or witch or all this stuff is that there are different types and that there are different you types look of at like your, right? Like your <laughs> hobbies and your interests and all this stuff. It goes back to what you and that other podcast brought up, that they're kind of similar to our um, uh, feminine archetype episodes. They're witch ones too. Yeah. Like yeah. you brought up nature and um, your, your garden, like you can be a garden witch, you know, that cinnamon in your coffee. coffee. That's a kitchen like a witch. kitchen witch. <laughs> right? Like, so... How many do you got? What do you, or what do you know of? What am I mean, oh my gosh, there's so many. There's like a cosmic witch who, if you're really interested in the cosmos and astrology, um, a divinatory witch, if you're really interested in tarot or pendulums or things like that. There is a sea witch where you're doing, you know, ritual and magic with with the ocean and tides, there's lunar, there's um, glamour witch where you're actually like, you can take your makeup and create spells with that. I mean, many of us already do that and don't even realize it, right? Um, Well, that's just the whole thing. That's what I loved about what you were saying is so many of these things, like everything else we talk about, we already do, but we bastardize it. We boil it down. (laughs) We make it too logical or too rational and we take the magic from it. But Mm -hmm. regardless of where you think the magic comes from, being a human is kind of a big deal, right? It's, it's a limited in duration. <laughs> you don't get much of a choice in where you are, but you very much get a choice in what you do with it. Right. Yeah. And so like connecting and all those ways that make you feel alive to me is being witchy when you're intentional with it, when you're looking for that spark, that magic. It's the main thing. It is, it is everything is your intention, which is also like when people talk about Oh, like, you know, wicked witch, oh, Satan or whatever, you know, if, if, if what I'm doing, if my intention behind it is good, it is good. And, and I'm not sure what else I wanted to say about that, but intention is everything. And whether or not you call it a spell, when you have a negative intention towards someone and you want them to have a bad day, you probably just do a little witchcraft, right? Like yeah. it's not all just in your head sometimes, right? Like, and so it works in the reverse too. When I want to have a good day and when I want to honor the fact that I get this coffee and I'm going to be grateful and I, you know, want to, you know, just enjoy it and be intentional with it. I'm going to mm-hmm. put a little cinnamon in it and spin it a certain way, right? Like it's so much of it we already do and we just don't realize it. We do. And I think not to, you know, beat the poor wicked witch of the West dead. I was so happy when um, the book Wicked came out and then the musical, which I have yet to see, but I've heard the soundtrack and you can pretty much figure it out. The fact that Alphaba, who is the green witch, it's like a prequel to the Wizard of Oz. It's it how, is. It's how Glinda and Alfalba or the Wicked Witch knew each other. Mm-hmm. They were actually roommates in school. <laughs> and the best of friends. They ended up being the best of friends, right? Mm-hmm. But the things that were considered wicked that Alphaba did were just, they literally were just outside of the normal society's boundaries. And they were viewed as wicked, but many of the things she did were 
her intention was actually good. So it's outside, just, it was viewed as wicked. Outside of society's boundaries. So that's something that going back to witches before, and then mm-hmm. even witches now, and, and specifically women, because we are heard or taken a little less seriously. But the mm-hmm. pharmaceutical industry, as important as it is when it's done well and done right, does not have the chokehold on healing, right? Like there are so many ways to do it. They've just found a way to mass produce it and test it in a less Mm -hmm. anecdotal manner. But way, way back in the day, we had women as healers who, like you were talking about, people would go to for their herbology and for, for their medicines and their tinctures and things like that, for their help with the gardens and with food. But we also had women who delivered babies and who helped women with women care. Mm -hmm. And as the medical practice grew, men came in and took that over. Men wouldn't let us be doctors. That's right. There's so many aspects of the medical industry to date that totally discount the fact that women's hormones are different, totally discount the female experience of giving birth. The whole reason why we lay on our backs is because it's easier for the physician. You're not supposed to. Any good girl will help you with that. And so while I'm not a medical practitioner, there's so many aspects of this, like Western medicine has its place and please, please, please do what your physician recommends. But if you don't feel respected by your physician, find a new one, go get a different one. And have open conversations with them about whether or not you're feeling heard, because they probably never have been called out on it. And if they don't hear you and respond, go find a witch to help you. A medical <laughs> witch. I found the best female doctor I have ever had, and I fully believe she doesn't know it, but she's got her little like witchy background in her where I feel heard as a woman for the first time in yes. what, 36 years by the time I saw her. Yeah. Um, and so all of this goes back to not only your intention for yourself, but intentions for others and pay attention to how society is reacting because sometimes they just don't like the change. And sometimes they just don't like things that are different and different is bad. But right now insulin has like a 5,000% markup, if not more, and instead of being 351 for a shot, it's like $80, right. Or for a month's worth of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the pharmaceutical industry is the wicked witch. (laughs) And the more herbalist would be the alfalfa side of it, right? Yes, exactly. I I took that analogy way too far. Um, I like it. I'm, I was riding with you on that train. (laughs) So why? So let's go back to, so wicked witch. So if, if anybody has actually read the wizard of Oz, it's a series of children's chapter books. It's not a single standalone book. Right. And it actually has a lot of socioeconomical and just, um, uh, just, it's a commentary on society. And so the book Wicked also dives into that too, um, with, you know, around racism and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so Hollywood took it and boiled it down to its easiest good versus evil. But when you think about it, Dorothy dropped a house on a woman and her sister got mad that the Wicked Witch of the West is mad. Somebody murdered her sister and then the murderer walked around in her shoes. Like, I feel like the Wicked Witch of the West, if you watch the movie from that perspective, Dorothy then went to murder <laughs> her victim's sister and Glinda in a poofy pink dress is like, yes, girl, that way. Like, it's so not okay. But we're taught it as like, oh, look at this woman in power and she's mad and she's angry and she's evil. And it works for a story. And I love the film. So don't come at me for that. Like it is fun. It's escapism, whatever. But like, are there any Hollywood witches you do like? Have they gotten it right? Yes. There are some Hollywood witches who, I well, I watch it every year. So my favorite one, okay. My favorite witch movie is Practical Magic based on the book, Practical Magic. Sandra Bullock, Nicole Kidman, Stockton Channing, and another woman whose name is escaping me. And who actually, so, so Sally Owens played by Sandra Bullock. I love that character, but I'm probably more in tune with the 
aunt whose name we can't remember whoever plays her I'm yes. probably more her because she's the one who's always trying to say hi to the other people in the village and then her sister Jet is like you know they're not going to say anything to you would you just stop trying to be nice and she's like oh but and she's kind of got a hat like this and, it's, and and you know they're in their garden and stuff so I love that but I used to love, so growing up, I watched Samantha. I watched oh, Bewitched. Bewitched. And as much as I loved it, I just was like, why can't she use her magic? Like I was just pissed at Darren all the time. So I really it loved wasn't. her. <laughs> yeah, I really loved her cousin, Serena, who was played by the same woman. And she had like short black hair and was really mod and she just did all kinds of magic and I was like yes oh and her. what a social commentary on the role of women at that time too that yeah, Samantha was, that was stuck in the past and and mm -hmm. that her cousin was maybe a little bit further in the future yeah wow yeah but so I have so many witches that I love but I will stop there what about you so when I first saw, when I peeked at the notes and saw your question, I did have to do some Googling because I was like, do I have a favorite Hollywood witch? And then I had to stop Googling because I got a lot. <laughs> so one of the shows I grew up with was the WB, now CW's Charmed, the original. Not oh, the yeah. Remake. Yeah. Um, although she was only on it for a short amount of time. I mean, I loved all the sisters on there. And even, um, you know, when, when Shannon Doherty's character Prue left, I, I, I liked the new one too, but mm -hmm. I like Shannon Doherty's character Prue the most because she just had a wisdom about her. Whereas, um, and, and although she was hesitant to embrace her power, once she did, she's kind of the most powerful. Whereas one was kind of ditzy and stuff just kind of happened to her for the first few seasons. And then the other was really hesitant and like afraid of her powers. And, and, and so then when I look at like the other witches um, that I could think of, so the movie, The Craft, Sarah, the protagonist in it, um, I really like how she comes into her power and she's kind of got like a quiet wisdom about her. But I gotta be honest, I liked the really uh, evil witch in that one too. Like she's just, maybe she's a good actress, but like <laughs> they just had such power. Yeah. And so then, um, and, and knowledge and wisdom. And I think that's what drew me to the witch archetype as a whole was you have to work at this. If you, and especially if you want to do do well with your intentions like you have to study and you have to write and you have to read and you have to be aware of the lore and keep a grimoire and all this stuff it is what i mean when they say a craft it is it's you have to practice it you are practicing the craft but then similar to practical magic like you said which is kind of um it, it it's it's a little bit about a coven i mean they're all related it's two sisters mm -hmm. and their aunt and you know um hilarity ensues no <laughs> there, there was a, a very short-lived show i think it was only one and a half to two seasons called witches of east end and it was very similar it was a mother and her sister and then um these two daughters and so it was about them learning that they had powers oh. um oh gosh amy do you not know about the show no. So the mother is immortal. I and thought has, when I'm reading it, I thought I was going to uh, say, no, it's Witches of Eastwick. No, Tracy, it's not, not Witches East of Eastwick. It's East End. <laughs> um, so this woman is cursed. Um, that um, So she has these two daughters who are in their mid to late 20s when the curse happens, that her and her daughters are immortal. But if either of the daughters die in that lifetime, both daughters die, she instantly becomes repregnant with them and then has to raise them all over again. Oh. And they've never lived past a certain age. And so the mom has gone hundreds of years watching her daughters live these beautiful lives and then pass away. So by the time we get to the show, she doesn't tell the daughters that they have powers. She and her sister have had a falling out. So she sends the sister away. And then the girls like something magical happens in town as it will. <laughs> um, and then they discover. And so it's kind of, um, uh, you know, like a, yeah. And anyways, but it, it showed the different kind of archetypes between the four, but it was really, it was kind of a coven and it was sisters and it was a bond and things like that. But then, you know, you got to go like even more broad than that. Hermione Granger is a witch. Like, so Hermione if you don't like the Granger. word witchy, Hermione yeah. Granger is a witch. Harry Potter, 
he's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> like, and we have followed them through uh, uh, middle school and high school, right? Oh, like, um, and as much as I love Hermione and she's amazing and wonderful, Bellatrix Lestrange is really my favorite. <laughs> well, uh, and plus, Sirius Black, uh, I'm and she's just crazy. Sorry, <laughs> the name Bellatrix is the best name ever, right? and it's played by <laughs> Helena Bonham Carter. So if you're yeah. gonna if you're gonna have a witch that slightly lost her mind is and a little evil, they they nailed it for me. But even in the book, I did like her. But yeah. then you know, because you were kind of listing off your journey, and you even had a more open upbringing where you were introduced to like palm mm -hmm. and tarot and handwriting and all this stuff. Um, me, I, I had Disney. There were witches left and right. Ursula. Ursula is not my favorite See villain. It. She's my favorite character. Yeah. Uh, Maleficent. Like, uh, when I love that Disney is doing all these reimaginings of the villain's origin stories. Yes. Much like the Wicked Witch of the East. I mean, their bad behavior is not excused, but it is understandable. <laughs> <laughs> but so I like the Hollywood is kind of taking back the witch in a sense. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, like I do, I like. I like the power, but it's not like this, oh, how does Aladdin say it or the genie in Aladdin, like unlimited cosmic power. No, like they have to hone their craft as you were saying. But yeah, I think, and, and I think that just shows a representation too, like all, like we're seeing an influx in young adult TV shows and other things where they are like redoing charm yeah. and there are Sabrina and like these different things coming back. So I am... Like, I mean, I'm literally the book that I'm almost done with is about a teenage you're writing. witch. The book that you're almost writing. Writing. Yeah, the, not that the book reading. that you are the author of. I'm the you author are the of. author of a book yes. that's just not published yet. That and book is it, about a witch. <laughs> it is. It's about a witch, and it's about a family of witches, actually. So they've even got their little mini coven as well. But um, so how how can people tell if they're witchy? I, I mean. We sort of talked about this a little bit, but think about, okay, I love it when people see you have, I don't know, an aunt or grandma or whatever, and they make the best chili uh, sheet cake. Okay. Chili, whatever. And you're what like, I can I have that recipe? They give you the recipe. You make it. You're it's like, not the same. what? It's not the same. And, and they're not no. doing that Midwestern, Southern, passive aggressive. I have a dummy recipe I give nope. to people. No, nope. they gave it's, you the recipe and it still didn't work. It's because it was their magic. Their magic is part of the recipe. The sum is greater than the whole of its parts. Yes. There are, I have a feeling, I don't know, my garden is pretty epic and for no reason like it's not like I'm it's your garden I mean, it's yes it is garden. It's my garden but so people who have these beautiful gardens and they're you know maybe it's flowers and they're blooming all the time um people who think about actors and actresses and they get on the stage and it's like magic. And I've heard people say that, oh my gosh, it was like magic. They just became that person. That it's so many ways you can have this little bit of witchiness in you without even realizing it. Oh, well, I don't want that to happen. Let me knock on wood. Or oh. you mentioned <laughs> divination, which is before. Let's yeah. say I was somebody for a very long time who... I just thought I paid attention, right? Like I thought that the things that I knew about people, everybody knew about people. I have since well, learned you that. You just took fault. your intu intuition as great. Not, not only intuition though, it's clear cognizance. There's some things I just know that when I step out of the way, I have an idea, I, I have an answer. I know how to do something. I know where to go. I suddenly just end up where I'm needed to be. And yes. not even for personal gain, like just all of a sudden like, oh, I was able to tell like, I followed a whim and went somewhere I don't usually go for an errand I didn't have to do, but just felt called to do and just knew I had to blah, blah, blah. And then there was this woman that was lost and was like, hey, do you know where blah, blah, blah places? And I was like, I actually do. And that's kind of a weird thing for a person to just know in this area. Like, that's not like a well-known place. Why are you going there, right? And I was so like, I want to go back. You said Claire Cognizant. 
clear cognizance. I just want to make sure that what that people understand what we're talking about. There's different clairs. Mm -hmm. So there's clairvoyance where you just see something in your mind's okay. eye. Yep. Clear cognizance is knowing. Um, uh, sure. Clair audience is you might hear something that isn't actually there. Sometimes people think clear cognizance or they get their clear cognizance and their clear audience mixed up, mm -hmm. right? Because it might sound as their voice. It's not like you have other voices in your head, but like I just know things as yeah. as though I know my hat is black. Like well, it's just knowing where it's clear. Yeah. I, what did you call clear? Audio? No. Clear audience. Audience. Like yeah. you actually are hearing, hey, go to Target. Yes. And, and go to the target and that's that's way out of your way. Go to that one <laughs> and you just do it. Right. right. I just want to bring up something super simple. Remember when phones would ring and we didn't have, you know, and they you weren't knew like who this. It was and without... you knew who it was. If you don't, I'm sorry. What do you think that is? Like, no, and I recently <laughs> heard so that makeup and hair one, um, they talk about it's doing enchantments, which I just think is lovely. Like, just it, mm -hmm. like you're or, or a glamour, it's a, a glamour. glamour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some yeah. people are just really good with their words. Like, you know, a lot of spells are poetry, just pure poetry. Think of how some words can make you feel just by reading them just by reading these few words and suddenly you feel better. Suddenly you feel sad. Suddenly you feel full. Suddenly you feel empty. Like that there's magic in, in that, in the crafting of mm. words, putting them together. Absolutely. Yeah. So for all of this to kind of, cause I'm someone, I am not and more one than anything else, which was same for the mm -hmm. feminine archetypes. I'm a very balanced person. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's indecisiveness. Like I find that I have power and interest in all of them. And, and take so are you saying you're a balanced witch? I forget the name for it, but there is, there is a name for it or that I've read. Um, but, you know, just going back to like, you know, every episode we've done, listen, if you haven't, um, but even just this episode, you know, it sounds like trust your intuition, trust your gut, whatever you want to call it, create your intentions. You want to set out in the world. It doesn't have well, to be a spell. It doesn't have to be about magic, but just not like, only create your intention, be clear about yeah. your intention. Yeah. And then once you know, you have that clarity, create and maintain a ritual around mm -hmm. it. And it doesn't have to be a Ouija board and candles and like summoning a dark Lord. It's not that. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Please. Don't. I, it's more like you said, I'm going to put some cinnamon in my coffee. When I bake this bread, I'm not going to do it when I'm mad. I'm going to infuse love into it because I know I'm going to give it to my neighbor. I'm going to feed mm -hmm. it to my family and then connect with others whether around this or not, have that connection. And then, uh, you know, just go out in nature. Like, like I said, being a human is kind of a big deal and earth is a big part of that. Go, go live it. <laughs> yeah. And I would say the other thing with connection is not only connect with other people, but understand that everything is connected. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very important to remember that for like, we all learned this for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, or there can be, but also that if you, it's a ripple effect more because the action reaction, that can be a little bit, that might not sound good, but that there is a ripple effect. So if you're, if you're following your intuition and your intention is clear and good, just think of what that ripple could be moving out. So you meet a woman and she's lost and she needs to find this place and you help her and you're, you're open and, and caring and helpful. The next person I she meets. I almost blew her off. I was yeah. like, oh, I don't know where that is. And then everything. But then you I did. did. Like, I, I do. I actually, like, I wasn't. Yeah. But, but my point is then what could that ripple effect have exactly. been? What does she do when someone's asking her for help now? Mm -hmm. So everything is connected. So, you know, when we, we kind of jumped into this episode because of, you know, the spookiness of the season and just like the feeling of, of, of this time of year, but let's say any of this resonated with you or like 11 year old, you was like, yeah, I did have a special stick that controlled the wind. And I'm really upset. My dad put in the bonfire because it was really a thing. And I could be helping the world right now with climate change. Um, tap into that. 
whether you start by just going and playing in your garden and making an acorn pie again, or, you know, like go on social media, check out ours. <laughs> we'll, go ahead. we'll put some resources in our Instagram and, um, or you could email us, but there's so many books. Like I got all my witchy books at our local library. And so like, yeah. see what connects, because there is something going on in the state of the world right mm-hmm. now where this type of stuff that people are into more and more people are like, you know what, that is a thing. And I'm going to put down those bags society gave me, and I'm going to teach you my craft. Right. So I think I mentioned earlier, part of my journey was being frustrated with people coming out and talking like they know when they don't know. And then what that actually showed me when I stepped back and I looked at that was this is such an intensely personal practice that don't take anything that you read or see online or any of the TikToks or anything like that as a rule. Um, when people yell at people online for how they shuffle their tarot cards or how they draw or interpret things, it's an intuitive practice, my dear. Run along. This is not, this message is not for you. Um, and so trust, trust your intuition, go to what feels good, take what resonates, leaves the rest. But then also like, there's some stuff I do. I've never seen anybody else do, and I'm not willing to share it, or I'm not going to go write a book about it because it's mine and it feels like it's mine. Um, and so feel free to do that too. Like you said, you, your garden has been amazing. I bet there's stuff you don't even realize you're doing, Amy, and it's just part of your own personal magic and power as a garden witch. Yeah, it could very well be. I, I just wanted to emphasize what you were talking about. Um, a lot of the books that you'll find if you do go and look at books and believe me, the library is the best place to do it at. You just check out those books, return them if they don't call to you. And then if you find one or three that you love, then that's when you can buy them. However, the main thing is, is I used to think, oh, this is the spell. I must do it step by step, word for word. And once again, just like with intuition and divinatory practices, it's, it's, it's so personalized. You do not need to follow what anyone else has set out. I used to go and drop four to $5 on a crystal that I was going to go and release into nature. Right. And like, it was, it was an investment I was willing to make, but then one day I signed up for this workshop meditation course thing. Um, and I did it last minute. And then the person leading it also very last minute was like, well, yeah, you guys need a crystal or gem. But Hey, you know what? If you don't have one, just go grab a rock. And I was like, just go grab a rock. Are you telling me? Are you telling me? I just went on my front door and was like, this will do. And it did. <laughs> and now that's what I do. So like some of the stuff, like make it work for you. Like it's, it's magic. Like, it's yeah. Magic. It, had yeah. Just, it has to feel right for you. I love it. Listen, this, um, you know, we always love to say, oh, I was really hoping for this card that this would be pulled when we do our Oh tarot. yeah, you asked the universe what they and thought. Yes, I did. I asked the universe and I was shuffling and I literally, it was almost like I surrendered to it. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I'm just going to be okay with whatever I get. I shuffled and I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm shuffling and then I'm going to spread them out and I'm just going to pick one card. And the card that I got was the high priestess. Shut up. The witch of the tarot. I know. It's amazing. So the high priestess in this deck, it's it's almost like you you cannot see her face. Mm -hmm. So it's like very mysterious. But she sits between the two pillars. And these pillars actually represent the pillars in front of Solomon's temple. Um, I'm not going to go too deeply into that. The thing with the high priestess is that I kind of love about her is she's not going to say, yeah, you should do this. She doesn't give anything away. You have to find your own way. So I feel like that really coincides with what we're talking about. She can help you, but she's not going to lead you there. Um, So I'm reading from the book from the tarot cards that I just did was the spellcasters tarot 
by Melanie Marquis. And so from the handbook, the high priestess provides us a link back to our origin and our essence. She represents the idea of knowledge slowly unfurling or mysteries unraveling. When I read that, I was like, oh, that's what I've been feeling. <laughs> An unraveling. Knowledge slowly unfurling. Returning I mean, to self, man. Oh my gosh, yes. Damn. So, yeah, she is very much she she is in front of the veil and we're talking about the thinning of the veil she actually sits in front of the veil um and you can ask her for things you can say like this is what i want or you know this is what i need help with but you have to be clear about what you want and certainly positive. Otherwise she'll be like, if you're like, oh, I'm not good enough. She's like, okay, you're not good enough. Uh, well, one way <laughs> to do that, Amy, <laughs> funnily enough, th thanks for the segue. I did not plan a transition and you can probably <laughs> see I did not do a write-up. Um, but our next show, episode 46, you can ask guide, spirit, helper, high priestess to show you or answer your questions via dream. Oh, goody, 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 goody. So that's not, that's not fully what next week is. It's now going to be a part of it. Um, <laughs> no, but um, so I recently had a dream of, I, I was out in, uh, sitting on the curb outside my house. I was just sitting on the side of the street and a woman I never met before was reading my tarot cards. And it all felt really, really like normal. It felt like it was happening in real life. I was not aware it was a dream. And then all of a sudden this man that I had been hoping would talk to me came out in the street and started talking to me and then brought me into his house and was really excited to show me these two different kinds of pie. And I, that, that's when I realized it was a dream. <laughs> and I started looking up like, what does seeing a fortune teller in your dream mean? What does seeing uh, your crush mean? What does a man offering you two different types of pie with enthusiasm mean, right? Like these are all questions for Freud naturally too, but Carl Jung had some ideas about symbolism in dreams and we all dream. And as much as, you know, certain scientists or people wanna say it's just our brain sorting through the junk of the day as we're, you know, converting short-term to long-term memory. I have had some dreams and they have definitely had symbolism to them that resonated. And the fact that other, you know, like how many people have had the teeth falling out of their mouth dream? Oh, falling dream. Yep. Legs, to like spaghetti dream. Oh, like these God. all have mm -hmm. collective meetings, whether it's from the subconscious or, you know, the mystical and beyond or whatnot. And I'm very excited because when I told you I want to do an episode on this, you had had a dream. And I hope yes. you remember it. Yep. <laughs> But yeah, so that was a really long way of saying we're gonna talk about dreamy dreams. So we talk about goal dreams a lot, but we're gonna we're gonna get sleepy. <laughs> so please, I, yeah, on. I'm excited. Yeah, for episode forty six, right. dreamy. All right, cool. Well, if this episode spoke to your soul or your witchy self, please share it with a friend. And if you have time, give us some love on your preferred platform with a rate, review, and subscribe. You can also reach out to us via Instagram and YouTube under the The Brightly Podcast or via email at brightlypodcast at gmail.com. And I have checked that <laughs> if anybody was keeping track. <laughs> still haven't emailed us, please reach out. Um, but with that, we hope you have a bright and enchantingly beautiful day. Ooh, love it. Bye.